Hi, this is Mrs. Often, and today we're going to be talking about projection vectors and work. Work is very important. As you know from this class already, it's important to work. But why is it important in physics? Well, I have my ugly little car here that's parked on a hill. Now, if you've parked your car on a hill, you know you can't just like throw it in neutral and let it sit there. It'll roll back down the hill you have to have a brake that's applying a certain amount of force to keep the car from rolling. And we want to ask ourselves how much force is needed to keep the car from rolling down the hill. As you can see, there's forces acting on this car. First of all, we have the hill that's headed this way, and we have the force of gravity, which is acting negatively. And it's all conspiring to make the car roll backwards down the hill. Well, in order to determine the magnitude of this force, we can use something called a projection vector. And a projection vector, if you think about it, it's like if I put a light that's shining um, so that the light is perpendicular to the slope of the hill, then this vector g, the force of gravity, will have part of it a component going in the same direction as the hill. And another component that will be like totally perpendicular to the hill. We have another video that we'll watch in class that will get more into detail on this. But today we're just going to look at how to calculate. So I'm going to project this vector g onto the hill vector h. Now in order to find this, I'm going to do the dot product of g with h. I'm going to find the magnitude of h and square it. But no, actually, because I'm a lazy person, I'm going to remember that, hey, the square of the magnitude of h is just equal to h dotted with itself. So I'm going to do that instead. Cross that off here. And the answer that I'm going to get, I'm going to multiply by the vector h. So first, Let's find the value of h dotted with g. Well, square root of 3 over 2 times 0 plus 1 half times 4,000 is going to be 2,000. h dotted with itself is going to be, let's see, square root of 3 over 2 times square root of 3 over 2 is 3 over 4. And 1 over 2 times 1 over 2 is 1 fourth. So I have 3 fourths plus 1 fourth in the denominator, which is 1. So I have 2,000 divided by 1 times that vector h square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. If I evaluate this, then 2,000 times the square root of 3 over 2 is 1,000 times the square root of 3. And 2,000 times 1 half is 1,000. So, that tells me that the vector that's needed, remember that includes both magnitude and direction, which I'll refer to as W1, shown right here, is going to be 1,000 times the square root of 3 comma 1,000. Now, in order to find the force, I would just need to find the magnitude of this vector. And the magnitude of this vector is going to be um, Two thousand. 
So the force of 2,000 is needed to keep this um, car from rolling down the hill. But the important thing here is that it's not a force of 4,000, even though that's what the car weighs. This g vector represents how much the car weighs. It weighs nothing in the horizontal direction. It's all vertical because it's gravity. We just need a force of 2,000, and that's because the hill is at an angle. If the hill were straight up and down, then obviously we need that force of 4,000. But because we have projected that vector onto another vector, we, it turns out we need less force. So we're going to just practice using the projection vector formula. I'm giving you two vectors, u and v, and I'm going to ask you to project u onto v. So this is the projection of u onto v. I'm going to do the dot product of u with v over the magnitude of v squared times the vector v. Okay. So I'll go ahead and find the dot product of u with v. That's 0. That's 40. If I find the magnitude of v squared, well, the magnitude of v squared is pretty easy to find. Um, this is just going to be 8 for a magnitude, and that magnitude squared is going to be 64. So I have 40 over 64 times the vector v. Okay. If you're not sure about any of these things, I encourage you pause the video. Sit down, calculate the magnitude on your own, make sure you get the right answer, and then start again. So 40 divided by 64 is 0.625, and so times 0 is still 0, and 0.625 times 8 is 0, 5. So the projection of u onto v is going to be this vector. Graphically, we can think of here's our vector u, and here's our vector v. What is the component of u that lies along this vector v? So if I think about a light shining from over here, what's the shadow going to be? And here it is, that 0, 5 vector. Now I can go the other way. I can say, well, if I were to shine a light this way, what part of u would have a shadow that lies on the vector, or what part of v would have a shadow that lies on the vector u? That's finding the projection of v onto u. Okay, so now we'll do projection of v onto u. Much of this is going to look exactly the same. Only now I have v dotted with u over the magnitude of u squared times u. So you can see there's a few little changes here. But I already know the dot product of u with v, so the dot product of v with u is the same. So that's going to be 40. And if I find the magnitude of u and square it, 4, 25, 29, and so it is 29. So I have 40 over 29 times the vector u. Now this is your choice. I'm going to do this using decimals. You don't have to use it using decimals. You could say, well, I got 80 over 29 and 200 over 29 for my vector. Um, I'm going to use this with decimals. and get 2.76 and 
and 6.897. So the vector, if I project V onto U, I'm going to get this vector 2.76, 6.897, so that's like the shadow of V that would lie along the vector U, the component of V that's along U. So that's finding projections of vector. And as I said, this is very important because oftentimes we want to know how much of a force is being exerted in the same direction as the direction of motion. This leads us to our definition of work. Work is force over a distance. Okay. Please do not use this as an excuse as you shove your physics book back and forth across your desk to tell your physics teacher that you are actually doing work because you're exerting force over a distance. There's two formulas that we could be using. If I lift this marker up off the table, like so, I am I'm doing work. I'm exerting force over a distance. But the force is not at an angle. So I would use this formula, force times the distance, multiplying two magnitudes to get the scalar value work. However, if the force is at an angle, like if I decide I'm going to drag this marker across the table, and it's at an angle, not all of my work, or not all of my force in dragging the marker is being directly turned into work because it is at an angle. So I would use the projection of the force vector onto distance, um, or an easier version of this formula for our purposes is cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between the force and the direction of motion times the magnitude of the force times the distance over which the work is being done. We'll do two example problems and I think you'll see that these are pretty easy to do once you know how to do them. Okay, so force along the line of motion. A hundred pound cheerleader is lifted five feet into the air. What is the work done? So in this, force is along the line of motion. So I can say that the work is just going to be equal to the force. The force here is all in gravity. She's 100 pounds. So the force is 100 pounds times the distance over which she is lifted. And that is 5 feet. So the work that is done is 5 times 100, 500, and our units here are foot-pounds. Now people say, are you kidding me? So, yes. Work is measured in foot-pounds in the English measurement system. It is measured in Newton meters, not to be confused with the tasty cookies if we're using the metric system. So foot-pounds is our measure of work in the English system. So the work done in lifting this 100-pound cheerleader five feet into the air is 500 foot-pounds. In our next example, we have force at an angle. And you've probably had this experience before. You've had to drag something heavy across the floor or carry something heavy. So here, a table is being dragged across the floor for 50 feet. This is done by applying a force of 250 pounds at an angle of 30 degrees. And I want to know, what is the work that is being done? Now before you say a lot, we're going to think this is occurring at an angle. So I'm going to use the easier version of that force at an angle formula, cosine of theta, well theta is 30, times the magnitude of the force. The magnitude of the force is given to us directly, 250 pounds. So we have 
cosine of 30 times 250 pounds, and we're dragging this table over a distance of 50 feet. So I'll multiply together cosine of 30, or 0.8660, times 250 pounds, times 50 feet. And I'm just going to round off to the nearest whole number here. Multiplying all of these things together, I get 10,825 foot-pounds, okay, which is really quite a lot of work. So it's a good idea when you're thinking about work to think about things where, you know, the work hasn't gone so well, like when maybe you've tried to hook a chain up to your bumper to haul a stump out of the ground, and you hope that the stump would come out of the ground, but instead the bumper came off your truck. I don't know if any of you have had that happen, but at any rate, probably the force that you needed was greater than the force that your bumper could endure, and it's bye-bye bumper. So knowing something about physics and knowing about work can really help you to have a better understanding of why this works. So those are your problems with projection vectors and work that we'll talk more about in class.